Right off from Finion, um, he's working on risk five implementation, yeah, obviously, exactly. um, which is uh, good news. <laughs> and um, yeah, you're speaking about the timing issues there. Timing issues yeah, there. yeah, exactly. Thank so you very much. yeah, hi, um, I'm Victor Schneider. Yeah, I um, technically I'm not working at Infineon anymore because I made an internship for uh, my last uh, five months there, and I worked uh, partially on. Also on the RISC-V um, processor there, and um, especially there on the M time implementation. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to talk a bit about that. And yeah, first I will talk about what is M time, and um, then we are going to see what um, makes M time so special. I mean, talking about a timer is not very <laughs> special, um, but. Uh, yeah, we will see what's special about that, and then I'm going to show some design approaches for that, and also a different approach for a smaller and embedded cores. And okay, at first, M time, it's a 64 bit timer defined in the RISC V specification, and it provides a wall clock time for the system. So, um, yeah, it, uh, yes, to get a timestamp from the system, for example, with the read time. Uh, instruction that's possible, and it can raise an interrupt at specific time points. Um, that's uh, there are multiple timers in the uh, multiple counters for the RISC V core, and M time has also an interrupt option. And it's, for example, necessary for um, scheduling an operation system or triggering tasks at specific time points, like uh, reading sensor values at a specific time interval or stuff like that. And yeah, so it um, exists. It wa it's one of uh, Risk Five hardware performance monitoring counters, and it consists of uh, two registers, uh, M time and M time compare. And you can see them there. There's uh, one M time, and that gets normally incremented for every clock cycle. And uh, then we have M time compare that uh, compares against M time, and if M time compare is uh, less or equal than uh, M time, we will get an MTI, a machine timer interrupt. And this can then uh, yeah, start the execution of a trap handler in the core. And uh, the hardware performance monitor consists of uh, multiple more hardware uh, counters. And these include, for example, M cycle, M inst red, um, which uh, counts retired instruction, M cycle counts clock cycles. That's a pretty similar approach. And then we have M-time, of course, and MHPM counter, which can, cast, uh, which can count custom events, uh, which are configured by the yeah, uh, core architects. And the access to these uh, timers is generally only allowed for the machine mode. I mean, that's for a privileged um, core. There you have, can separate them into specific privileged modes like user, supervisor, and machine mode, and machine mode has the most privileged, and only this um, mode can access these timers. But there's a way to allow access for um, less privileged mode, and that is through shadow CSRs. Shadow CSRs are not real, CS, not real registers. They are more a view on a real um, register, like, for example, M-time. So that's more like a wire connection to them, and so they don't have to be implemented uh, like flip-flops or stuff like that. And um, these allow access to less privileged modes. Okay, so what makes M-Time special? Um, M-Time makes use of memory map registers, and that's uh, the only module within the RISC-V spec that uses these memory map registers, and therefore the access um, has to happen through the memory bus. And uh, normally, the other counters are all implemented using CSRs, control and status registers, which are uh, internally in the core and um, yeah, are accessed through special instructions. And here we have a one problem, because the less privileged mode can access M time uh, through a shadow CSR called time in uh, in this case, and um, now there's a question, how is the underlying data accessed for this shadow CSR? Because the shadow CSR is, uh, yeah, 
is accessed using special instructions like CSR read write, for example, and memory uh, for memory map registers um, requires load and store operations to uh, yeah to uh, get the access to the memory bus and. Yeah, so there's a question how to do that. And um, at first, why is the memory map registers there in the first place? This is because uh, the timer might be implemented outside of the core. So uh, we not as usual with all the other counters, we might we implement them locally on a core. They That's different to uh, M time because this is normally located, for example, in a special always on a low power domain where um, which is all also running when the core is offline or um, in a separate module for driving a crystal or oscillator and it's um, uh, yeah therefore more natural to to put it outside of the core and therefore have it accessed through the memory bus and they could also be reasons like a dynamic frequency scaling um, which makes the core clock unusable because uh, for a stable clock you don't want a clock that uh, runs at uh, one point at 10 megahertz and another point at 20 megahertz for example and uh, um, also if you share it with uh, different cores you want to have it outside of an individual core. So yeah, that's uh, the reason or at least the reason I came up with to have it memory mapped and uh, now, how can we implement such a thing? Um, the first uh, yeah, overview, is like, overview is like this. So we have a RISC-V core. And uh, then we have a memory bus, which connects, of course, the memory and uh, maybe some more peripherals and the time uh, facility. And there, we can just access uh, all M time and M time compare as usual using memory um, operations, like load and store. But the question is now how we access M time, uh, how we access time, and yeah, that could be solved very easily by not implementing time at all. And uh, what happens then is if we uh, run a CSR read write command that targets the time CSR, we just get an illegal instruction fault because because time is not available, and uh, this could then. Use, um, used by a trap handler, which uh, gets called um, in machine mode, that then emulates the behavior and reads, uh, reads M time and writes it back to the desired um, register. So then, yeah, the instruction can follow as usual, and the trap handler uh, took care of uh, reading um, the M time. Register. So here the complexity is moved to the software side and it's very easy to implement in hardware because <laughs> we don't implement anything. And uh, on the downside we get that it's just having very slow access time because we have to um, yeah, do a lot of uh, stuff in software like um, handling all that in the trap handler which takes, which takes some time. And this approach can be found in uh, some open source cores, for example, in the IBEX and uh, NEO RISC-532. And yeah, so it, it seems to be, uh, at least what I came up to be the most uh, common approach to do. So yeah, to just uh, yeah, get a bit uh, fast done and not implementing it all. Um, another way could be to uh, use a dedicated signal line just routing it uh, directly to the core. That's also a fairly easy approach, but uh, not so easy on hardware usage because, or area usage, because we have then a 64 bit line that's necessary to route potentially over the whole core. And uh, yeah, if we have, for example, a 32 bit core, we uh, yeah, have. Have, uh, for example, for the normal memory was just 32 uh, bit width. That would be, yeah, therefore extremely um, big. But we have fast hardware access, and this approach can be found in the blue spec with five flute, uh, which is also an open source core. So, okay, and now we uh, can also think about a different approach, and that's allowing the CSR instruction to access the memory bus. 
um, which uh, reduces memory usage in comparison to the um, to the uh, yeah direct uh, routing of the signals and. On the other hand, it may introduce stalls because memory bus could be uh, busy doing other things. And yeah, this could look like this. In our case, we had an, um, uh, in this case, we had a normal five stage pipeline, and the CSR access was happening at the, at the execution stage. And here we could you just figure out which instruction is a time um, access, and then um, uh, delay it for one for one cycle and handle it in the memory uh, memory stage and use there the memory bus to access uh, m time underlyingly. Um, yeah, so that could be possible. But another way could also be that's very similar to uh, take to handle the CSR instructions specially um, if they have a time. Um, uh, yeah. A target to the time CSR and translate these CSR instructions to uh, load and store operations. There are some challenges with that because um, uh, we need to issue two instructions per CSR access since CSR accesses are always uh, read and write at the same time and this also needs to be atomic. And uh, uh, But we have here uh, uh, a fortunate point that the time CSR is read-only CSR, and therefore we don't need to issue stores, and we can just uh, rely on load operations. So let, that would look like this: we are having here uh, the normal pipeline, and we could, in the ID stage, translate the CSR instruction to uh, memory operations. Okay, but um, yeah, that's uh, how you could go in the spec conform way. But we had also a different approach for small, uh, especially deeply embedded cores, and that was uh, um, with cores that don't have, uh, which don't have dynamic frequency scaling, just a single clock domain and a single core, so very basic uh, cores. But these are also, at least from what I heard, pretty common to implement. And um, here we uh, Use, could use CSRs instead of memory mapped registers. That would, on the one hand, uh, reduce the complexity and uh, be more consistent with uh, the high performance monitoring counters. And here we could uh, also, at least in our case, have a faster access time uh, in comparison to using uh, the memory mapped approach. And um, what we can do even further is uh, we can then, because M time and M cycle use the same clock, we can combine M time and M cycle because M cycle is also counting cycles. Um, and here, since M time and M cycle rely on the same uh, base clock, we can remove M time, the register M time, and provide time just as a shadow of M cycle. So uh, then we can compare M time compare with time instead of m time and uh, would get a compatible behavior for uh, yeah every mode except the machine mode because the machine mode has to know that m time isn't uh, available but uh, other less privileged software should or is uh, not affected by this change and such a approach can be found in, in the rocket chip where Time is just a shadow of M cycle. So, yeah, in, to sum it up, uh, M time uses uh, memory map registers, and shadow CSRs of such registers are non trivial to implement, and embedded cores can benefit from such a pure CSR design, which uh, results in consistency with all the other HPM counters and might lead to faster access time and less area usage. So, yeah, that's uh, it for my side. Uh, thank you for your attention, and yeah, if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, no, we have a question. I, I have one question first. Um, okay. While I go over. The, in your bio, you said you worked at Infineon working on like a RISC-V core generator. 
Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell <laughs> us more about that? Like, how, how were you generating the RISC V core? Was that Chisel or something? Uh, else? No, that was not Chisel. That was a different uh, language. It was a custom uh, made, I would say, alternative to, to Chisel. Um, that's an in house uh, application of Infineon. And they have it for a couple of years. I mean, it's originated, I think, about the same time, like Chisel. Um, about a few years, I think. Oy. And <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's used to do some meta modeling and templating and generating a specific uh, RISC V core. And that's not open source, sounds like a fully proprietary internal thing. Uh, that's proprietary, but yeah. I know that there are some uh, uh, scientific uh, publications about that. Is so it any good? What? Is it good? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at some point, yes. It's, I, so it's, uh, yeah, I would say it's a nice approach, but there are, of course, since it's, yeah, maybe not, yeah, it, it, there are some, some use cases which are hard to, to implement in that way, um, currently due to the implementation. I mean, yeah. if it would be open source, it might get some more help from others, ah, but, uh, indeed. yeah. The idea definitely is a, uh, is a good one. Too. Cool. The, the reason I'm sort of asking is to better understand the, the kind of trade-offs you're trying to make here with the, the time, uh, M-cycle and M-time registers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, in the end, uh, what I did was implementing uh, multiple solutions for the generator to select which one you want. So, yeah, that was one part of the job. Yeah, uh, so uh, on a side note, I think Infineon is moving from tri-core to disk five completely, so uh, the future chip would have more of a risk five products. Tricore, Tri yeah, this Oryx and all, it's a, a lockstep architecture, yeah. yeah. Uh, so my question is, uh, you showed um, a couple of um, ways to do it, and yeah. um, uh, some of them for, for me were, were kind of illegal, like the first approach to use a trap handler and do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, if I design a, a hard real-time uh, system, right? My yeah. OS is a hard real-time. What do you would suggest? Which method will you take to design it to to make a deterministic uh, um, uh, uh, soft OS, uh, real hard time real time OS run on on this kind of processor? Uh, yeah, that depends probably on the core which you're. Um yeah, implementing. If it's, for example, just a, a simple core that just is, is a, a single core processor uh, which has just one clock, then I would probably just go with uh, implementing it as a CSR and not implementing like a memory mapped register. So you don't have the struggle to deal with uh, having to translate it to memory mapped uh, uh, yeah, operation. Uh, and on, on a multi-core, then what would what you suggest? CSR to to M time mapping. Uh, pardon? So on if I have a multi-core system, let's yeah. say you would suggest that I convert CSR to M time. These kinds of translations I do. Uh, yeah, you you could use memory map. At least then you would have uh, the same coherence problem like every normal memory interaction. Um, but you could also do some special stuff and implement CSRs also there. Uh, that could also be possible. Yeah. Go, Olaf. And then break. Yeah, hi. So uh, hi. I'm interested in optimizations and things like that. Uh, I was wondering if you have looked at further optimizations to this. Because if we take a random uh, risk five core, let's say the award-winning serve, the world's smallest risk five CPU, uh, a 64-bit counter would be roughly the same size as the whole CPU core. Uh, have you looked into? Uh, uh, I that? haven't looked into the size of the uh, of the um, of the core compared to the timer, um, but I mean, a 64-bit timer and a 32-bit core also has some implications on the execution. So if you, for example, want to read the 30 two-bit timer, uh, then you would have to issue two reads and stuff like that, so that's also a concern. Um, but I, we don't have tested how big it is in reality compared to the core. So. 
No. Yeah. yeah. And there are also some more 32-bit timers, 32-bit uh, uh, registers, general purpose registers. I mean, there are a couple of them, so these should also be uh, have a size that's uh, yeah, maybe, probably bigger. Maybe yeah. a little bit rational about CSRs and memory mapped registers uh, yeah. that was in the beginning of a risk fire spec. Yeah. CSRs were meant for internal hard intimate state analysis of specific heart. So yeah. if, if something resides only in the heart of a CPU and uh, you know, it's belong to that heart. Yeah. Uh, that's CSR. Time is a global thing. Yeah. It's uh, the more cores you have, the more clocks you have, the, you have clock gating, uh, any asynchronous design, like you, time don't belong to heart. Yeah. It's, it's not stuck to heart at all. So any sufficiently complex risk file system will need to have memory mapped yeah, yeah. Time. Yeah. That was rational. That's why it okay. is on peripheral. It's never belonged to heart because it's okay. it's okay. outside, not inside. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and the resolution is generally microsecond, right? So who cares if it takes you 10 or 50 or 100 nanoseconds yeah. to yeah. get it, right? So yeah. Usually. Usually. Um, cool. All right, everybody, let's thank the speaker. Cheers. Thank you. And it's coffee break time.